Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Get Real Podcast. This, my name is Ned. And Lisa. Thanks for joining us once again. Today we're joining you on uh, sunny Manitoulin Island. Mm -hmm. I thought I would never get a shirt that said that. It's not me, but here I am. Looks good on you. I liked it. I like this one. So today's talk is about attachment. And I think it's a, a, a topic that I think a lot of people can relate to even if you don't really know much about the attach, attachment. There's different meanings of attachment depending on different philosophies. In the Eastern philosophy, they have their views on attachment. And in psychology, they have views on attachment, um, how it, it affects us in a very adverse way. Uh, and maybe I'll start out with this, the psychology view of attachment. Attachment theory is when when we're born, they say the first six months of our life, we need to be closely bonded with our with a caregiver. And and if we're if we feel insecure during that time, or we have traumas come up, they say that we developed uh, an attachment. And so how it affects us later in life is that we have difficulty managing re- relationships, but. Uh, when we're speaking about t- attachment today, we're, I want to talk about it in maybe a little different sense. And, you know, the Eastern philosophy, they talk about attachment. Uh, Buddha said the attachment is, is the root of all suffering. And so when his, his theory was when we let go that we actually obtain nirvana or peace. And I, and I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. When I, when I look at attachment, I see, if I look back to, at my life, I see so many areas that my attachments created difficulty for me. So, like when you think about attachment, what's what's some of the first things that come up for you? I think that uh, a great deal of us are motivated by that, at least at some point in our lives even if we're not aware of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what comes up personally for me, actually I was exploring this last night, right? I went for a walk and and uh, I just felt compelled to. Went by myself and, and uh, up comes these attachments for me to look at. And I suppose it's no surprise because I knew we were doing this topic. But uh, I walked up and I, I was looking at the different trees and, and started uh, realizing that I was getting attached to the idea that that Ned's father um, was here for when these trees grew and his father is now not here with us so it just followed this this trail through my mind and my heart and I, I kind of spiraled into um, this this place of despair with it and um, that's just an example of, of that. How, how quickly it can get us right mm-hmm. uh, it you could follow it further, I, I think. Um, I know I could, uh, going back into my childhood, which I think most people's originate from. And that would be, it would have to do with a feeling of safety. And maybe because he was a father figure to me, it, there's many attachments we don't know about that are unseen, right? We don't know how they how they connect. Mm-hmm. And, and you said it sort of led you into... Um, prematurely grieving the loss of your mother oh. that who is still with us. Exactly, yeah. So it wasn't based on what's happening right now. I think that's an important thing to know that th- that does happen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it took me to feelings of um, what if something happens to my mother? Well, of course something's going to she's she was she came before me. That's the, that's sort of the cycle of life, right? But I'm having all these emotions to go with it. I'm just heavy heavy grieving. And then I I realized that even the things that I physically own, that I have too much of, uh, I always seem to be trying to organize it, but really, I think there's too much, and, and just being honest with that, there's attachments to that. There's, there's an emotional attachment probably to, to almost everything that I own. And it was just, I thought, how, how would people do if they were to sit and, and really think about all the attachments they had? Mm-hmm. Do you have any that you can think of? That, yeah, that you still have to work on maybe. Yeah, like I, I have to be really careful with 
When I when I think about attachment, I also think about desire, mm-hmm. and I, I have to be really careful with my desires and and that I'm I'm not leaning heavily into that. So when I look at my motivations for doing things, quite often I'll find my desires or my attachment for an outcome is the reason why I'm doing something, and so I I find that with with my my writing of my books and early in my career with tattooing I was I was very attached to trying to to make it as a tattoo artist and it it sort of consumed my world and and some attachments like that you know hasn't been like a terrible thing for me mm-hmm. but other attachments that are really rooted in desire and has been you know, it's been harder for me to manage, and and certainly my, because I felt this strong urge to write, to share, to teach, and and then I got attached uh, about how people would receive that, or mm-hmm. if they would eat, take the time to to look at anything that I was was up to. So more than a, even a habit, sometimes it can be a transferable thing, right? You, so that's what I see as you describe that. You're transferring it from one thing to the to the next. You think at first it's about the thing that you're doing, but it's really the same action, right? Mm-hmm. I think you made a model of of that too that that you could share with us today. Yeah, I was I was created like a chart. It, it's it's so simple, but I think it it just illustrates attachment. When we think about attachment, it, it's about holding on. But then if we flip flip attachment over it's also we're attached to pushing things away too oh yeah to so hold on reject you know and so the action is to pull things closer and the action of the opposite side is push things away and then the the mindset that goes along with it is that i can't live with this thing Mm -hmm. so whatever we're attached to pushing out of our life i can't live with that Mm -hmm. so we're pushing it away we're rejecting it or there's the other side where i can't live without it and so we we feel like we need to hang on so dearly that we lose sight of of the moment at hand we lose sight of of things that are, are not going to ever stay the same but yeah so fear is at the root of both of those right mm-hmm. do you remember i find this funny now i don't know why but do you remember years ago we used to do those um the magazines or whatever they'd have like a survey people would do it kind of started to be online as well uh when when the internet first came out but they had like attachment style quiz or survey i don't, I don't know what you call it but Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was a, a big thing for a while. It just, it reminds me when you're talking about the sort of the push and pull of it, it's, it's it reminds me of, of a couple of the attachment styles, but it was almost like um, normalized when, when they would do these, these funny magazine things. So when I think about attachment and a lot of the attachments I've had, they're rooted in desire and, but there's also a lot of fear that surrounded my attachments. And one thing that I've I've really practiced in, in my life has been uh, moving away from fears. Yes, because I, yeah. I see things that move me into fear. If I'm afraid of an outcome of something or I'm, I'm afraid about things, I realize that I've, I've moved into my desires too heavily. I don't normally refer to them as attachments, but but they really are. Like it's it's an attachment that I'm having if I if I start to move in my fears about about things. And there's logical fears and there's illogical fears. Mm-hmm. And and of course, you know, in logical fears are are beneficial to being safe. But for the most part, most of my fears and my attachments that become fears were illogical in nature and never come true right and never Usually. a lot of it doesn't come true a lot of times that is it's actually handed down from its conditioning it's handed down from our parents mm-hmm. or well it doesn't have to be our parents but it can be anyone in the family even like longtime friends mm-hmm. 
And so when when Buddha said that attachment is the root of suffering, I I think when we look at attachments in what they what they do is they lead us to into the mind more deeply. And so like my attachments have been a, there's a mental position right that's wrapped around this thing that I want or what I desire. Leaving no room for or anything else, right? Mm-hmm. And and I what I've so what I've experienced is that the more I become, the less desires that I have, I leave more space for the presence of the moment to arise. I'm not caught in this dialogue in my mind, thinking about what it is I want or what I don't want, going into the emotion of of being afraid of if this do, if something doesn't turn out the way I want it to, you know, I'm going to be really upset. And so it really has given me a, a certain freedom. Even when I go to do a public talk, I'm, I'm not attached to, if I've prepared for the talk, I'm not attached to how that's going to come out in while I'm speaking. Being detached is just, is really about being present with the moment and just allowing this moment to to bring up everything that we need and i think i think we're more supported than than people realize yeah. this this is my journey right now because it's it's uh it can be harder than you think to sit down in front of a camera even if it's edited so something <laughs> just happens sometimes doesn't it and so i'm trying to learn to just well to show up still and just to to be with Ned in the moment because he is he is so practiced at that. It's you're one of the few people I see that actually do that. Mm-hmm. Just let that flow and, and not be attached to how it looks, how we look. So what I what I would encourage people watching this video to do is take a look at what what do you feel you couldn't live without. And, and make a list of all the things that you think that you couldn't live without. And then make another list of all the things that you can't live with. And so look at those two lists. And, Interesting. And, and then take, a, take a, an evaluation of, of all the things that are on those lists. Why, why can't you live with that? Why can't you live without something? And, and trace it back. And what is the root cause of that? And I think that provides will provide a lot of information for people to to kind of dig into what they're what we're attached to. Because our attachments really hold us back. Mm-hmm. It, the more the more I've detached from needing certain outcomes to happen in my life, like like I was just saying, the more present I've become life unfolds at the pace of perfection Mm -hmm. this is this is a quote i've said many times life unfolds at the pace of perfection when when i needed to control everything in life and i i was attached to everything i was struggling there was a constant struggle life it never provides things the way that we we think it's going to happen you're kind of spinning in your own unhealed stuff is all you're doing right Mm -hmm. Again, when I when I look at attachment, I think it's a lot of it is about control. You know, there's there's a certain amount of words that we can attach to attachment. <laughs> you know, there's desire and uh, fear. There's control, and all these all these words, like none of that feels good to me. No, none of that makes me feel. Uh, liberated or free it's a constriction Mm -hmm. so what attachments lead us into constriction and anytime we're coming from that place our life will reflect that as well I recently uh, I saw somewhere or read somewhere something that really resonated with me and it was uh, that that our attachments are are they're places that we haven't loved ourselves enough or haven't looked at at all perhaps and once we we see them, we allow them to be there and see them, we actually don't have the need for that attachment anymore. And uh, 
I think if we were to sit and do the exercise that you're talking about, um, writing down uh, what we can live with and what we can't live without, we'll, that will start to, to become apparent. Mm -hmm. uh, they might be things that we've never looked at before, so it might not just be things that we haven't loved in ourselves enough, but we just haven't looked at before. Do you think it's it's places where we haven't uh, loved ourselves enough, or is it a our attachments are places that we haven't been loved enough? Well, I say that because we we need to love ourselves where we haven't been loved before. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that goes hand in hand, and I that's I think that's a great point. When you look at the things that you're you're attached to, they may be places in your life where you didn't get what you needed. And so and I've noticed that in myself, there's been times like if you and I are, are struggling where I, I'm getting upset or you're getting upset. I, I know that my, a lot of times my upset is not feeling heard. Mm -hmm. That's one of your things. Yeah. So that's one of, so it's like an attachment. If, if I think that you're not hearing me that, or you're not listening or you don't care about what I'm saying, then I, I may get really upset. So that, that for me would be one of my attachments, you know, the, the need to be, to be heard. And, and I, I can take that back to different areas of my life. Yeah. And, and one of them, like, do you, is there anything you want to respond to there? No, I was just, it just reminded me that, that we can trigger each other too. And, and just bring out each other's old stuck energy, right? Like, you can just keep going, keep going, keep going on it if you don't recognize what's happening. Yeah. And I think for me, uh, that attachment was when I had employees. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I had really great employees and they're wonderful people. But there was times when I, I said that, you know, this is what I, I want in my business. And then the person would just do whatever they wanted anyways. Mm -hmm. And I come back and I'd say, you know, this is what I expect and it hasn't been happening. Why, how come? Can you give me a good reason? And, you know, the answer would be no. And then <laughs> I'd say, okay, well, this is what I expect in, as in the business. And then they still wouldn't do it. <laughs> and then I, I remember getting so frustrated. Yeah. The, the one time where I'm yelling at my, my employee and the person said, uh, so I have no good answer for you. <laughs> and it's just like, I, d I didn't, I felt like I was just totally ignored. When truth doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> so like that, that became a thing for me over the years with having employees and, and where you just don't feel like you're, you're, it's your operation, but it's like, you don't have say, it's like, you're only a one-fifth of the equation or that, something. That's the external that we were talking about, trying to control the external, right? Mm -hmm. And I, my conclusion now is that, you know, you just can't make people do anything. Yeah. Uh, you can't. If you got employees, you have to, I think we have to win their respect mm -hmm. and, you know, find people that are, are pointing in the same direction as you. When, when you look back at it, there's... When you look back after, 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 there's there's really no blame. They were just part of your, your learning, part of your path to get to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I was attached to having things go the way I wanted them to go in my business. Mm -hmm. But again, there those some of those attachments were not leaving people the freedom to to do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And... And it, it wasn't, some of the attachments I had wasn't overly important, you know, to, to press on my employees. And like I say, I had, I had some really great em, employees Did, yeah. in my business. And, yep. and great times with each of them, I think, really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a lot of fond memories. We're just talking about this subject in particular, but. So again, I, I challenge people to, I challenge you to look at what are your attachments or look at both sides of your attachment what you can't live with, what you can't live without. And and spend spend a week just putting yourself on notice. It, notice that when when you're say you're in a lineup at the grocery store, if you're attached to the idea of getting through faster, 
uh, you're in a traffic jam. You're attached to getting out of the traffic jam faster. And use this as a trigger to start becoming more present. Become more present and allow life to unfold as it is. Try not to, maybe for a week, try not to control anything. You know, and, and I know it's not practical in every aspect of life where we can't. There are things that we need to, to control in our lives. But there's so little things. There's very few things that I feel like I have to control at this stage of my life. And by giving up that control, I've, I've allowed myself to become a lot more peaceful. You know, my, my last book I wrote, or second last book, was about the topic of peace. And, and in nowhere in that book did I write about, it's good to be attached to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's so, it's so important to, mm. to learn how to let go and, and let things just be. And, and for us to just be, just be in this moment, allow what is. Any final thoughts? Yeah, just uh, when you feel emotionally drawn in, that's your cue that it's coming up. You can allow it to be there again. I think we sometimes it's okay to do that just to let that dissipate or just so we can become fully aware of it. But mm. yeah, anytime you feel emotionally pulled in in a way that doesn't feel um, expansive, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's one of your things. Right? That, that's a good point. The, when our emotions rise up and we start getting anxious, it's like, what am I attached to in this moment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for watching these episodes. I know I enjoy doing them. I sure hope you do. <laughs> I really do. I'm a little stiff still, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I really do enjoy sitting here with you and uh, you always have great reminders for myself and for everyone. And I like trying to join in the talk with you. Well, you do more than try. You Well, yeah. You're that's half right. the equation here. Oh, um, that's right. Nels, my Nels. name. <laughs> <laughs> my name is in it, right? All right. You take care and have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you.